do you remember about Obi Moore? Well, he was a just a great, great high school 400 runner. Could have been probably the greatest of all time. You don't find no kids out of high school to do what he did. There's no way. There's no way. He was way before his time. Way before his time. He was the Michael Jordan of track and field. The best place for you to have been racing Obi was behind him at the at the beginning of the race. If you were in front of him, you knew he was coming. You knew he was coming to get you. You're talking about a guy who, 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 who was number one since he was nine years old at every level. Whatever happened to Obi? I have no idea. Every time we go somewhere, it's the same thing. What is Obi doing? I mean, you know, what happened? I heard Obi wasn't doing well. I heard that I knew he had had problems in school. And so then I just lost track of what, what, what Obi was doing. I don't know. It seemed like it was Alabama or Mississippi, somewhere over there, a JC or a four-year school that really just put in a track program with him as the key point. And that was the last you saw him? Was yeah, that yeah. I don't know. Do you know where he is? Thank you. When they gave me a call three weeks ago, I was at the house. Um, I got a call from a man named Chocolate Man. Chocolate Man is real good friends with CK and he's been coming to this meet for 40 years. So Chocolate Man called me and said, hey, I'm gonna get this guy named CK on the phone. I got some great news. When CK told me, I started crying. Chocolate Man started crying. Everybody on the phone crying, literally. And I said, man, I can't handle this right now. I need to call you back in about an hour. I, I don't know who to start with. I don't know who to tell, who to tell first kind of situation. And I said, this is a very special moment. I can't wait to see you back at, back at Franklin Field. Enjoy. I called everybody that was important to me, crying. Like, because I know how big this is um, to get inducted. It's huge. It's, it's just a huge accomplishment to get put on the, 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 the pin relays wall of fame. And for so long, I always felt like uh, the track and field world forgot about me. I got my start in running in 86. Uh, my first track team was the South Bay Panthers. I trained with them for four months and then we basically left the team because we moved to Pasadena. It's when um, my mom relocated out to Pasadena. One of her friends in LA was like, well, since you work in Linwood, um, we could figure out how to get him halfway, which is LA, and he can run for the Jets. The first year that he ran, Ovi was not the best athlete out of the group. He so, uh, sort of took a spanking. Being at the bottom, running against older children, you know, I took some losses. I got beat up on, and I didn't like it. He came back as an 11 year old, and I put him in the 800. I didn't let him sprint that year. And this one guy, Larry Montgomery, he would like destroy Ovi in practice. We were running, the, I think it was the 800 meters one day, and we got to the 600 meter mark, and Larry went by Obi, and Obi ran off the track, and he just fell out and started crying. And I said, Obi, don't worry about it. It's all gonna come together in the end. The end is the championship. We get to Lincoln, Nebraska, Obi takes it out. He went out in the 60 flat, the first 400, and Obi just kept going. He must have won by at least 20 meters. It seemed like it was more like 30 meters. And Larry finished second. That was the point where Obi started to believe in a program.
Actually, I didn't even know what the Olympics was. And if I recall reading the article, he said if he stays on the right path of the training, he can possibly make the 96 Olympics. Because I followed after Steve Lewis. And Steve Lewis at 19, you know, ran 43.8 and won the Olympics. And he used to run for the Jets. So I guess with him seeing me break all his records, all his team records, um, he just figured if he stay on this path, he can make the team. When I first got to Mir, I was a little scared. People are bigger than you, taller than you. Um, they got certain attitudes. People are mad dogging you, which is like staring you down. So that first year, I was kind of figuring it out. You know, I went out in the 800, like at, uh, I want to say 50 point at the state meet and broke down. Took almost last. <laughs> you know, Granville, everybody just went by me. When you went to Mir, first of all, Obi's mom and uh, Clyde Turner, they called me on a three-way to let me know that they felt it was a good idea that I still coach him because I had done so well with him so far. I came from eighth grade, real dominant, breaking national records, running 40, uh, 47, 16, and then that next year at Mir only ran 46, 8. But I should have ran. 46 low, but it was a lot of fear in there because I'm thinking, hey, these guys are grown men and it's a lot of mess talking. So, um, yeah, that first year, I learned a lot. But the next year is where I really stepped on the scene and showed people what was up. I think that race in 95 stayed me at Cerritos, put me on the map as a legend. And the odd thing about this, I was training for the Junior Nationals. So I ran, what, 45-8? You know, I wasn't even peaking, not even close. The 200, that really hurt me. Lean, he lean, he won. I started crying. I, I didn't like that loss. I should have won that. I wanted, you know, I wanted three, three goals. Four by four, I'm still emotional. So that emotions kind of tapped in to this race. Now our first leg, Joaquin Gray, great athlete, but he's gonna give you a 49 every time. Second leg, Mikhail Haywood didn't show up, scared to death. Two time, same thing. He pulled every muscle in his body. He was supposed to give us a 46 high, 47 low. Didn't show up. The anchor leg grabbed the baton. He's out, flying. So Sutan, he's dragging in, limping. I try to snatch the baton from Sutan and miss. Go back and grab him. So I get out, but I'm like, man, this guy is flying. Why is he going so fast? The two guys from up north behind me is running me down. But I'm relaxed because I know my body so well. When I get to the top of the curve, I see him look back. I say, oh, I got him. And then I make my move. That last 30 meters, it was just crazy. It was like time stopped. It is the greatest feeling. It was one of the greatest feelings in track that I ever had. Looking at the buildings and the streets, it really reminds me back in 96 and 97 when we came out of here and did what we did shook up the world so it's great memories but this weather is unbelievable
we had done something when Ovi started high school. We had said we were going to do something. And that deal that we made was for him to, in high school, run the 800 all the way through April and then drop down to whatever race that he was going to run in league. And his 11th grade year, he sort of backed up off of that. And that's where I saw the change come. A few things I think I made a mistake with was focusing on the team too much, like coming to the hill, which is easier than approaching the two miles and the miles with Coach James. So that fell off. So my 149.16, my junior year at Arcadia, I only ran 150 point. To me, he should have came back and at least ran 148 flat to, keep, to stay on schedule. And from that point on, he never ran 149.16 again because they were on a different schedule. My junior year, um, my ego was planet size. I just ran 45-14 easily. So once we got to pre-pin relay, I was talking to Gang of Mess. But I didn't, I didn't understand the science behind what I was going through. Four rounds at the Olympic trials in July or June, end of June, or July. Um, I'm just thinking, hey, I, I'm winning. So we win the pin relays for the first time, walk in the park, go to state meet, win that easy. I won the 200, the 400, and the four by four. I think we ran 308 at the state meet. So I'm getting ready for the trials now. But what I lost in November and December from my base started showing up. So my confidence is like, okay, I got four rounds. I don't think I, could, um, I can hold this for four rounds, but I'm gonna go try. I definitely thought he had a chance to uh, make the final, at least. And I've had, I thought he had a chance to run 44, 44 seconds as a high schooler in, in the final. But, um, in 96 was the first year I felt I saw Obi extremely intimidated. Anthony Maybach, Michael Johnson, Quincy Watts. I mean, you go down there, everybody's out there. And I'm walking by these guys and I felt like a boy. Like these guys are like big. Once I didn't advance, I was kind of happy. I'm like, I'm a little out of my league. Even though I'm in the race, I wasn't in the race. You know when you're in the race. I wasn't in the race. I'm like, these guys, they rolling. I think that if he could have gotten his mind together for that particular event, the 96 Olympics, then I think he would have saw something special. But he, he could not get it together. I think for many of us, this is the highlight of a season. There are other meets that, uh, in some respects, are more important, but none gains the admiration, the, the heartfelt appreciation from spectators all over the world as what this meet engenders. In 1965, Villanova Two Mile Relay Team is being honored on the 50th anniversary of their win. Being inducted into the Penn Relays Wall of Fame is all about what you do at Franklin Field. It's got nothing to do with what you do any other place, any other time during the course of your track and field career. It's all about what you do on this weekend at the end of April. That's Obi Moore. I knew him since he was a kid. Look how grown he is. Once my fame got there, it was like I, was just, I had the key to the city the key to the nation and the key to the world. And um, I misused my powers. <laughs> Me and Sutan McCullough, we had ditched school to go to Long Beach to see these girls from Long Beach Poly. We have a dual meet, it's a Thursday, we have a dual meet that day. And uh, we get back late to the dual meet. I'm a senior, uh, Sutan is a junior. Coach Turner, Cussed us out, get on the track. What are you guys doing? Y'all the team captains. So I hop on the track, I run like 47 flat or something. 
That's easy, it's on dirt, no stretching. Um, and I felt something. So I, I tell Coach Turner, he said, that's what you get for being late. So I feel that's the first time I felt something. I iced, um, and I'm like, man, it's not going away. So I tell Turner, and we start going to deep tissue over in Cerritos, which I didn't know these guys didn't have a license. They're doing the elbow thing, digging in my muscle, breaking my muscle down even more. So it's feeling good, but I should have let it heal properly and let it mend. But I'm around people that's not professional. Coach Turner didn't know, I didn't know, they didn't know. They just breaking my muscle down. So the muscle's feeling loose, but it wasn't right. So when I get to Philadelphia, I have a pulled muscle, but the adrenaline, the crowd, the energy, my ego, my spirit, my soul, I'm gonna run, cause this is the pit relays. Obi got hurt in March. He strained his hamstring in March. And I think that if they had rested him from March on until they ran in league, I think he would have been okay. But that didn't happen. They were gonna go, they were gonna break the national record in the four by four, Hawthorne's national record. They wanted to run faster than 307.40. Uh, and they had the team to do it. The first team were, they ran 308. The second team ran like 312. So you had guys on the second team that could fill in for him until he got healthy, but they didn't do that. They didn't do that. And uh, I think that was the beginning of the end. All right, we're down on the infield with one of the all-time high school greats, Obi Moore, who 18 years ago set this track on fire with his team, John Muir. <laughs> oh! Oh! That boy trying to roll. When my mom kicked me out the house for getting the car shot up, that's when I just fell off. 